Yo, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Omega. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Omega Classic Records is the page and the name. Omega, none rhymes greater. So I'm bringing to you the final piece of the Kanye West trilogy, Genius. Uh, this is my final review on Act 3. Um, I'm fresh off of it, um, like coming in hot, like literally about five minutes off the documentary. Um, it comes in right after part two, picks up um, during the uh, making of album two, uh, which is uh, late registration. Um, part three spans from late registration all the way to the Jesus is King album. Uh, that's when he uh, gets the Sunday service choir together. Uh, so you got all of that in between. You got graduation, you got uh, Life of Pablo, um, you got uh, the combo or collaboration album with him and Kid Cudi, Kid See Ghost. Um, I didn't see um, anything on Watch the Throne. Dog, I, it, that just hit me. They literally say nothing about Watch the Throne. There's no J uh, footage in, in this part of this leg of the, the trilogy. There's no mention of Watch the Throne um at all. Wow, I didn't I didn't know I didn't notice that until just this moment. Um you get to see Kanye uh unfold as the modern Kanye that we all have become uh acquainted with by way of the tabloids and the press and the media. Uh, you get to see Kanye um, grappling with his mental illness and then coming to the uh, surface about it. Um, you get to see Kanye transition into the, you know, uh, I have bipolar disorder and I embrace it, Kanye. Um, this was uh, tough. When I was watching it and I got a little toward the middle, um, what it reminded me of, it made me think about the, the two trilogy or the two acts before it. And when I'm watching part three, I, I began to think of it as a whole piece instead of just part three having a focus. Um, I don't know, maybe because you know, this is the Kanye that I'm more acclimated to because it's the Kanye that I'll see and you too will see every day uh, on your social media platforms, on the news. So maybe, you know, it kind of um, kicked in more of a mundane uh, feeling of sorts. Uh, what I was thinking of when I was watching part three you know, there's these movies that I really love and um, like Belly. I really love Belly and I really love um, what's another one I could say? Uh, Juice. You know, if you don't know Belly or Juice, Belly stars uh, two rap stars, DMX and Nas. Uh, they're both uh, drug lords trying to be bigger drug lords um, and it you know turns into a whole bad situation where one uh, guy and their best friends you know they one guy goes one way and a higher path the other goes another way and a lower path um, same kind of uh, similar kind of echo and juice you know a bunch of guys are friends and um, you know a couple of them get killed by their friend and and the friends that are left you know one one of those friends the main character bishop goes you know one way which is the latter and then the other friends go to higher route so um but the point here is 
why it made me think about those movies is because after watching those movies so many times, um, Juice and Belly, I kind of get like an anxiety a little bit when it comes closer to the end. Um, I don't like to see what's going to happen in the end. I don't like to see, you know, um, you know, the part where Bishop just takes this turn for the worse and, you know, um, and, and I, I've watched the entire movie a bunch of times. Same for Belly. Like, I, I know parts of the films, both films verbatim, you know, but that's the feeling I was getting watching this third leg of this documentary that I had never seen before, but yet I was getting this anxiety and it was kind of like, you know, I didn't, I wanted to finish it, but it was kind of like, I had a little apprehension and I was going to finish it regardless, no matter what, because I had never seen it. All right. So this isn't that kind of anxiety where, you know, it's like watching a scary movie and you just, you know, dodging the screen. It wasn't that. It was just like a, an anxiety like, damn, you know, we get into that part of the movie. You know what I'm saying? That part, you know, where the fun times are over, the fun, you know, portions of the plot are done. You know, now it's getting ready to get a little dark. And it's like, damn, you know, you know what happens in the dark. Um, so it's not that the, the third leg of the documentary was bad or anything or that it sucked. But um, I kind of hate to see that that dark turn. You know, you, you go through part one and part two and it's just so bright. And so I guess, man, I'm just a I'm an underdog nigga at the same time. And I love to see a motherfucker fighting for something. I fight for something every day. All right. So to watch him fight so hard, you know, for these last two weeks and seeing that part one and part two and then you get to three and he's still fighting. He's still got the fight in him. But he's changed. You know, um, a lot has happened in this third leg. You know, his mother passes, which kind of hits the switch. It flips the switch going into this darker realm of life. Um, and I hated that. That hurt. Um, he starts separating from people who were around him, the day oneers. Guys like Cootie, you know, and, and not seeing him for a six year period of time. You know, then here, here comes the Kardashian marriage. Um, you know, more Grammys are constantly coming. Um, but that kid that was like really bright and really, you know, just such a, a light, um, it's it's not the same. You know, the hunger's there, yeah, but it's turned into something else. And you can see the mental fight within starting to come to the surface. Um, a lot of screams and outbursts and you know, I have two good friends that deal with uh, mental disorders. I, I, both of them have different forms of schizophrenia. I've known these two gentlemen for years. Um, one of them has always kept up his meds while this other one has been one to be uh, a little more irresponsible with that. You know, missing his meds and you know, having to be reminded or an outburst occurring. And then it's like, oh, you know, that's the that's the checkpoint where it's like, all right, let me get back under control. You know, the outburst that I was seeing and the bop, 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 and, you know, all that stuff. And I'm looking around him and, you know, I hear yes men in the background. Uh, I definitely will say Cootie was not a yes man. Um, Cootie's a good guy. 
Cootie is a friend. Probably the, the last friend around him in this in this documentary. I can't speak for in life and every day, because who knows who else is around Kanye that may or may not have anything to do with music. But Cootie is a friend, for sure. Um And I'm seeing these outbursts, you know, these yells and these screams, and I'm just seeing um, this transition that it, it it's kind of a little painful. It's a little painful. So excuse me, you know, if I come into this review with a little bit um, of a a little less luster than the last two. I, I wanted to come in and off of it fresh because this is how it left me, you know? Uh, this is this is right where it left me at. So, um, man, man, you know, a lot of a lot of good things, you know. Uh, you get to see him going to China. You get to see the construction of the Boost three uh, fifties. You get to see the construction of the seven hundreds, and what his, you know, ideas were behind the design of, of the shoe. Uh, you get to see people actually designing the shoes uh, inside of Adobe Premiere programs. You get to see people in China uh, inspiring him with everything from pottery to uh, you know just just the, the other materials and um, you get to see Cuddy in there with him and, and they making uh, kids see Ghost some parts in China some of the some of the songs uh, just like that uh, that that one was cut. Some of it was cut in China. That one kid see ghost song. I really like that song a lot. Um, it's that feels so good. It should cost. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, Ross. Uh, get up, say, uh, uh, like a mix of Master P and Rick Ross. Uh, uh. That's how I can't think of the name of it right now. But that's that's partially recorded in China. Um, I liked how he went to these places. These foreign territories and recorded music. You know, Kanye is uh, doing a lot of recording in his phone, which is awesome to see, because I do that. I have, I've been doing that for years, and I got like a bunch of notes in my phone from hooks and sounds and things that i recorded. Uh, it's good to see him, you know, using that phone as a tool like that. Uh, but you know, it was it was just more of a darkness throughout this leg of the trilogy. Um, after all of that good stuff, it was more darkness. Um, I'm not gonna say it was overshadowed by dark stuff, but it was a lot of darkness. You get to see the press conference meeting uh, from the uh, announcement of running for the presidential candidacy. Um, how he kind of, I'm not gonna say humiliated himself. I feel like that 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 wouldn't be the right term, but he put himself in a in a negative light. But yet in his mind, you know, it was like he thought it was not okay, but he thought it was real, and he thought that the media, when they were taking shots at it, was real. It was kind of like he was deflecting it by agreeing with them. But yet I could see that it bothered him. And you had guys behind him like, man, he's, you know, turn that off, man. He's talking bad about you, he's speaking negative. And he's like, Kanye's like, no, no, it's facts. It's real, you know? And, the dude back there, like I stand corrected, you know, like dudes changing their opinions and shit, like changing, you know, on the yes men shit, you know, because this man is kind of in this mental realm where, you know, 
you really don't know what to expect. Listen, I don't never want to work with, hang with, or be around a motherfucker that you really don't know what to expect. That shit, that shit is, is weird, you know, and you find yourself in a, in a situation where you have made this person in some circumstances more important than yourself. You care about this person's opinions more than your own. You go from, uh, being in a, a, a co space, like coworker, cohabitation, you know, partner space to a servitude kind of space, you know, uh, a catering to kind of space. And, um, I understand the theory of, of having to be a soldier before you're a general, having to follow before you lead. But there's just some circumstances, man, where it's demeaning to yourself and you don't ever want to find yourself in them. You know, don't be nobody's, nobody's yes man or nobody's, you know, fuck that shit, dog. And I ain't saying that he was like sunning niggas and shutting them down. and But it was just a lot of those outbursts. And I could tell people around him kind of had a light, a lightness to their walk. Eggshells a little bit, you know, out of fears of, you know, pissing him off maybe or losing their jobs or, you know, like I'm looking at him talking to these real estate dudes in one scene. And it was such an uncomfortable scene for Cootie. He actually turns the camera off. You know, Kanye's talking about how he's a, he's an alien and he got to figure out how to translate this alien language in his head into English. And he asked the real estate dudes because one of the dudes is like they they sitting in the middle of a, uh, a, a beautiful house in Rio de Janeiro out on this balcony. And one of the dudes is looking over the ocean at this mountain. And he's like, that would be a beautiful place to build a church, Kanye, you know, for you to kind of have your Sunday uh, choir, you know, host things and uh, do your Sunday service, you know, and Kanye goes off into this whole ramble about, you know, he asked the guy, have you ever been to the hospital because your brain is too big for your head? And, you know, and the dude's like, no. And, you know, these is three like professional real estate white dudes. You know, they there, of course, I'm sure for financial interests, yes. And to talk about real estate and probably more business ventures. But this thing is talking about how his brain is too big for his head and shit. And he didn't been to the hospital for it. And it's just quiet. It would be crickets in the room. Crickets, dude. And, you know, I'm sure these white dudes are thinking this nigga's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he's just like, you know, ah, and he's one of them scream. It's the, it's the scream that he does. Uh, if you know the 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 song when he's on there, uh, he's, he's it's on the Jesus is King album and he's talking to his dad. It's like the first single he dropped. And at the end, he's like, he's like, uh, that ain't God like, you know, and I'm like, this what that ain't God like and his dad's like, ah! he's like doing that scream <laughs> like multiple times through this third act. You know, that's 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 like a calling card of his. He's watching the news conference when he ran for the presidential candidacy and he's up there talking and he's got the fucking bulletproof looking, you know, Saudi Arabian vest on and you know he's looking at them and he's ah, you know and just i'm like dude genius or not and i understand genius to an extent i'm not a genius to fully extend uh, understand it and i could be but i i say i say i may not be because of what i have seen genius exemplify you know like they said mozart was you know deaf and was still making music i think i believe that's mozart right uh correct me if i'm wrong put it down in the comments whichever um uh, uh 17th or 18th century that's like 16th or 15th century musician uh you know they say um you know these geniuses kind of exemplify this 
weird and erratic behavior. Um, I get that. You know, maybe I'm not because I don't exemplify that shit. Maybe I do have erratic behaviors that I have not displayed to other people. I don't know. But some of the shit I've seen in this third act, like, man, you know, just like that real estate scene talking to them dudes, you know, Cootie was like, man, I'm going to turn the camera off. It was just, it was like too much. It was, it was, it was like, you don't want to capture him in this mode right now. Like, let this be. And then the very next day, boom, he's in the tabloids and for making that speech and, it, you know, and it's looking, looking, looking crazy, sounding crazy. And, you know, just like, damn, you know. So, um, like I said, this act was kind of like watching Scarface. You, you love Scarface, right? Jay-Z said it, he says it best, you know, he, he said, he, he says it uh, in one of the songs, I believe American Gangster songs, where, you know, he's talking about Scarface and maybe it's not American Gangster. Uh, maybe it's an older Jay song, but he talks about how Scarface kills Manolo, you know, his right hand man. Yeah, I think that's like a volume two song. I think there's another reference of it in American Gangster, though. Um in that uh in that one song um it, it, it's just dark and it's like watching scarface you love scarface's come up you love his drive his hunger you know then they get into the montage push it to the limit they hit in the streets they grind the limit on the he killing motherfuckers and grind he really i don't think he was doing a lot of killing then at that point but you know scarface was on the way up you know and then it's like he gets to the table with the bosses and then he makes that one mistake of not, you know, blowing up that car and everything just starts to go downhill from there, you know, and next thing you know, he's killing Manolo and, you know, and then his sister's all doped up shooting at him in the office and, and then here come all the, the bad shit coming to get him. Like it, it was, it was, I had, I caught that, I caught myself feeling that kind of anxiety, dog. And I hadn't even seen the motherfucker yet, man. It just came out today. I hadn't even seen it. So, I can't say disappointment. Um, what I can say is that I'm going to pray for Kanye. And now I see why people say pray for Kanye and shit. Uh, pray for us all. It's just a lot of shit happening, but... Uh, in reference to just this documentary here, pray for him and pray that he is keeping himself up and taking care of himself and that the people around him have that interest in heart, you know, as well. And they're not walking on eggshells and afraid to tell him shit and afraid of their jobs and afraid, you know, because they going to get replaced with somebody else, you know, make hopefully that ain't the case and, and that ain't how people feel him, but pray that he's listening to those around him, you know? I can only imagine, you know, I can only imagine where his mind is after losing Miss Donda. Miss Donda was so important. She, you know, some people in our lives, um, there are rock of Gibraltars. We lean on them, we love on them, We cry with them. When you lose that, it's tough. And not all of us can gather after that kind of loss. You know? Um, so pray that he can. Pray that he can sustain himself. And pray that he can do the things he needs to do in order to function as a human being in this crazy society uh, because you know the money can't save you uh, the fame definitely can't save you so but yeah man um, I know this may not have been the best elaboration it wasn't um, as colorful as the, the previous two I just gave you what I received 
you know, if you felt differently about it, put it in the comments. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. This is Omega's review, final review of the Kanye trilogy, Genius. Uh, I loved it. It was great. I enjoyed it. Uh, part one and part two, to me, are rewatchable over and over and over again. Um, I may watch part three again, but I don't want to see that repeatedly. Um, but part one and two, yeah, I could watch that every day over and over. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Um, good shit all around, though. Cootie, great job, brother. Great job shooting. Great job being a great friend. I appreciate you. There's a part in the in the documentary that I didn't speak about when Cootie and, and Kanye come back together after six years. And Kanye is uh, at a, I think it's an album release party. Um, uh, it's for the one album uh, where he's got Good Life on there and uh, uh, Stronger's on there. Um, and he couldn't get Cootie's name right. He kept calling Cootie by his his partner's name, you know. And that was just, I could see on Cootie's face the hurt. Like, it was like it hurt him every time he called him another name. Um, like, sometimes, man, us as people are guilty of letting these things get to us. And they take us away from ourselves. If you're an artist or a producer, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to the people around you. Stay grounded. I believe the look giants can't look in the mirror comment from his mother. I believe uh, he might have lost a little bit of that. But I believe he'll get back to it as well. All right. So please make sure that you like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this trilogy. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate anybody that comes by the channel. Make sure that you send folks just like yourself that are music lovers that want to learn and educate themselves and grow to the channel. I'm going to continue making content for people like myself that are musicians, rappers, singers that need it uh, and that want it and that are seeking it out. We're going to get uh, some more technical content in here where we're talking about numbers with streaming and streaming services and etc. You know, we're going to dig deep because I'm still a student. I'm always a student. And as I learn it, I'm going to pass it on. So thank y'all for watching. All right. God bless y'all. And to anybody with mental health disorders, take care of yourself. All right. Make sure you do that. Please use your medications. Do the things that you have to do to keep that up. It's important. Without your mind, you don't have your health. If you don't have your health, man, it, nothing else matters. It don't matter. All right? God bless y'all. Thanks again. I'm out.